Okay, hi everyone. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to part two of Meridian Yoga with Kat Westwood and myself, Cliff Andrews. Really glad you could make it for this uh, live session. I uh, see, please say hi in the chat. Let us know you're here to let us know where you're from. Um, and uh, yeah, really, really enjoyed last last week. Um, just going to stop sharing the slides for a minute so you can see us. Kat is actually in the Shiatsu Centre, aren't yes. you, Kat? Yes, I am. Thank you. It's very spacious and pretty quiet. Hey, Cliff, yeah. you're in your yoga room. I'm in my very own personal yoga room at home, so I'm really looking forward to doing the exercises later on. Yeah. Okay, great. So let's get straight on, and um, I'm just going to share the slides again. Yes, into fact, the earth element. Absolutely, yeah. In fact, I'm going to do something we can now do with a new upgrade. I'm going to spotlight the slides so you can take the, they take full screen. And we're just going to go through um, the earth element stomach spleen. We're going through a few points and we're going to go through some theory just to start the session off. And then Kat's going to take over and uh, take us through a series of uh, yoga asanas that link with the point and the theory. OK, so let's just find out a little bit about you, about what you've been up to, whether you came to last week. So let's just I'm going to run a poll. Just tell us about last week. Did you? Um, I'm just going to move it on a little bit more. <laughs> uh, yeah, were you at the live webinar or did you watch the recording or maybe you haven't seen week one yet? Maybe you're new to that. Um, so let's just share that. Maybe you can just let us know. Were you here live last week or did you watch the recording or are you new? Let's see. Okay. Right, we've got a lot of new people on. We've got like 25% people so far. There's people joining all the time um, have missed it. So I really recommend that you check out the recording or go onto the online course and we'll talk about, about a little bit more about that later. Okay, so we're gonna go straight and we're gonna do an earth element exercise. So we're going to experience um, what happens when um, we do an exercise that kind of interrupts the earth element um, energy. We'll see what happens, and then we'll see if we can figure out which kind of syndrome that kind of flags up might be happening to you when that happens. And then we'll link that in with the points, we'll link that in with the theory, and then we can go with the um, asanas and we can figure out how we can energize the points and use the meridian sequence in a kind of energetic way to uh, balance out the earth element okay sound good all right so i don't do you know if you want to do the standing up cat i'm going to do it sitting yeah. down here it's easier for me yeah um, I've, got, I've got my paper and clip board ready do i <laughs> yeah. just in case yeah that's it okay so we're going to stand you can either stand or sit and we're going to just go into our alignment so we're tuning into the head floating up, the sacrum hanging down, and getting relaxed. We're opening up all the joints. And then what we're gonna do is imagine our connection with the earth, and that's where we get all our nourishment from the food and drink. So I'm gonna put my feet firmly on the floor and imagine that that energy or that nourishment is coming up from the earth, from the bountiful earth, and it's nurturing me and giving me lots of um, support energetically okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to imagine i'm going to close my eyes for this we're going to imagine that we kind of get cut off from that earth energy right we're going to cut off from that earth energy and see what happens to our energy so we're going to tune in notice first of all whether your energy is going up or down And also just notice if anything else happens. Okay, now just um, imagine if you had to draw a picture of that, what it would be like. And we're going to bring back the connection with the earth. So I'm gonna imagine my feet connecting like a root back down into the earth again and get that lovely feeling of nourishment coming up from the earth again, just to get back to a nice balanced place. 
Right, OK, so let's just take a minute and let's just draw what, we, what happened to us. And then I'm going to run a couple of polls and we can find out what um, kind of tendency there is towards the syndrome. So I know, what's I know what happened to me. Um, first thing I want to do is draw an arrow, maybe whether you felt your energy going up or down. Um, a very strange feeling, Cliff, I do have to say. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. What happened to you, Cal? I'll tell you what happened to me. I just got this feeling of energy going oh, up. Oh. What happened yeah. to you? I felt like a my energy went down, but I wasn't heavy. No. I turned into a deflated balloon with <laughs> the consistency of soggy porridge. Oh no. And I felt very empty. Oh dear. That's not very good. I really want soggy <laughs> porridge. <laughs> Well, I really hope, I really hope that uh, you managed to get that, you know, get a decent balance back at the end there when you reconnect it. OK, yeah. so let's see what happened. Let's see what happened to everyone. OK, so basically, here's some of the things that might have happened to you. You might have felt kind of tired or anxious. You may have felt more of a hot or fullness in the head. That's what happened to me. You might have felt heavy, which is what happened to Kat, more of a deflated type of heavy thing. Or you may just get felt weak or blocked in the stomach area, or maybe something else happened. So let's just get an idea um, of what happened generally to our Earth energy. Let's just share it. Okay, which one is the nearest to what happened to you? And we'll just see. Wow. Oh, I we wonder go. what the other is. Yeah, well, maybe they could just share that in the chat and Dinah can feed it to us, see what happens. Yeah, obviously a lot of different things can happen. But look what we've got here. We've got actually we've, it's very interesting. We've got about nine percent felt heavy. That indicates more damp. Um, Sixteen percent were like me, felt kind of hot or full in the head. That's the stomach energy rising up. And then weak or blocked in the stomach area and tired and or anxious. That's more like stomach and spleen key deficiency and that's the most popular one with a combined score of 48 wow. percent so we can help you with that can't we cat yeah definitely. <laughs> okay let's just run let's just run one other poll let's just find out whether your energy went generally up or generally down we were split exactly half and half here cat's energy went down and mine went up yeah. but let's find out what happened to you um did your energy go up or down generally let's see or maybe something else happened Oh, OK, wow. so look, we're looking at much more energy up, which is interesting. We need that spleen energy, um, yeah. to, stomach and spleen to ground. and We need the stomach energy to descend. And I think that's probably something to do with the amount of kind of overthinking, maybe a bit of anxiety going on that's tending to let the stomach energy rise up. That's quite a typical pattern um, in the stomach and spleen pathology. So let's have a check that out. OK, look, here's a bit of TCM theory for you. That's traditional Chinese medicine theory. If your energy tends to go up, it means that the stomach is not descending the chi down. And this feeling of ungroundedness and headaches are typical symptoms. Um, if you felt your energy going down, it's more likely that the spleen is not holding up or raising up your ki. And the type of symptoms you get are, it can be prolapses if it's more of a medical internal thing, but generally it's more like a heavy thing, a bit like Kat had with her deflated balloon. So as we're doing the yoga um, in a moment, you can bear that in mind and um, you can use that, use that uh, information. The cat will talk us through to balance those two things out. So here's a few symptoms related to the TCM syndromes. If you're tired and anxious, which almost half of you were actually, mm -hmm. that's more of a spleen key deficiency. Um, full or hot in the head like me, heat in the stomach channel. Heaviness tends to indicate damp, but it also can be spleen key deficiency as well. Um, and then if you feel weak or blocked in the stomach area, that's usually spleen key deficiency and unregulated digestion. And we've got some really good points for oh, that. Yes. Lining yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Right, we, can, we, we had a little competition, didn't we, on one of our Zoom calls. We had a competition. Okay, everyone, if you had to give us four points of the most important points on the stomach and spleen meridians, what would, we, what would you choose? And uh, pretty, we came up pretty unanimous, wasn't it, amongst yeah. all of us? 
I mean, we uh, really stomach... need to squeeze two in on the end there. Yeah, that's right. We didn't, we couldn't, we, we, we had a bit of an argument about whether stomach 25 or spleen 15 were more important. So we put both of them in because as we'll see in a moment, they're right next to each other and they're kind of similar in what they do. But yeah, we all agreed that stomach 36, the most famous point in the body, we'll get to the location in a minute, is really important. Tonifies the key in blood. Heat in the stomach, this is the one I'm really looking forward to. I really need this point today. Stomach 44 clears the heat from the stomach meridian. Um, and spleen 6, another really famous point, um, strengthens the stomach spleen, resolves damp. So that helps raise up the chi and lighten up any dampness you've got there. And then stomach 25 and stomach 15, we couldn't leave them out because they're so great at regulating the digestion. So let's have a quick look at those points for just any of you not familiar with them. We've got stomach 36. That's the three leg mile point. Tonifies key in blood. And how to locate it is you take your kneecap, you find the lowest part of your kneecap and you go a, a hand width down and one finger width out to the side. And there's just an indentation right here, stomach 36, um, which is where the point is. It's on the outside of the shin bone. One hand's a little bit down on the outside. Another way I like to find it is put my hand right on the kneecap and then this finger here kind of slides into it. If you put this main, your biggest finger along your shin, the other one kind of goes straight into it. And there's the picture. So. That's a really useful point to know. Uh, stump 44, I really could do with this. You need to get hold of your foot <laughs> and just press in between the um, second and third metatarsals, just up from the actual toe. So it's not right down on the toe. It's just in that web, just up from the web there, just like on this picture. And that's the one you need to clear the heat from the stomach channel. It also does various other things as well, but we're mainly going to be using it today to clear the heat from the stomach channel. Isn't it a great one for a hangover cliff? I was told that by a very famous Shiatsu teacher. Yeah. I, I will not mention her name, Carol Beresford Cook, on live on air. <laughs> <laughs> but she actually told me all about that very early on in my... I can't think why she knew that and why she thought that was important. Can you? I, no. I, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have spleen six, another mega famous point. Again, another hands width. That's three sun up from the middle of your ankle. <laughs> uh, and just behind the shin bone, spleen six. Don't forget that's contraindicated in pregnancy. So if you may be pregnant, if you are pregnant in the early stage of pregnancy, or you may be pregnant, just keep away from that point. <laughs> it's also another super strong point because it's the meeting point of three yin channels in the leg. So it, it regulates the kidney and the, um, I'm sorry, the kidney and the liver channels as well. So it's just sort of all purpose point. And then finally, here we are. This is spleen 15 and stump 25. We thought we'd put both of those in. You find your navel, you go four soon out, which is a little bit long further than a whole hand's width, right on the edge of the abdominal muscles. And then if you go halfway back in again, you're gonna find stomach 25. So it's these points here. And if you just gently press in there, it has a kind of soothing, regulating effect on the stomach um, and the spleen. And of course, the other thing is that, is that uh, stump 25 is also the bow point or the, the sorry, the moo point uh, or whatever you want to call it <laughs> yeah, bow point, for the large intestine. So that's again, another has another effect on regulating the digestion. So there's our four mega points. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's over to you, Kat. We've got uh, oh. 45 minutes now to take us through the routine. Thanks, Cliff. And yeah, as you can see with all of the points, um, is that the stomach and spleen channel are all on the front of the body. And the first webinar that we did, the kidney and the bladder, all run down the back of the body. So we've done the back uh, last week, and now this week we're coming to the front of the body, which kind of makes sense, really, when you think of stomach and spleen and the connection with um, food you see something really yummy that you want to eat and then you bring it towards you to the front of the body. That's a nice image to think about. Um, to begin with, I just wanted to read a little bit from Van der Scarabelli's Awakening the Spine, a lovely book full of pictures, quotes and really 
lovely things that you can just dip in and out of in your practice. But I thought this really rings nicely, chimes nicely with the earth element with stomach and spleen. She's um, talking about energy and um, kind of Einstein and quantum um, uh, physics. So it's called matter and energy. Energy transforms itself into matter as we can see it every day on our planet. Solar energy provides heat and light, giving life to plants on which humans and other animals depend for nourishment. That nourishment in turn gives them energy. The sun's rays evaporate water, which falls to the earth as rain which causes rivers to flow and so generates a different form of energy. Energy changes from one form into another. Einstein was one of several scientists who showed that matter too can be seen as a form of energy since the two are interconvertible. And I thought that was quite lovely. So this feeling of energy and drawing on the breath and connecting to the earth can also help with our digestion, uh, hot heads, or me with my soggy, sad kind of feeling balloon. So actually, if we gently come up to standing, we'll connect with the points that Cliff's just shown us on the um, slides, and then we'll go into a sequence straight away. And then later I have a lovely pranayama, which is a breath work in yoga. And it also connects with um, a really good digestion, uh, relief stress and all sorts of things. And again, like last week, we'll come into a makaho, which is the um, shiatsu stretch, but links really well with one of the asanas in yoga. So if we come up to standing to begin with, Take your time. So I'm gonna stand here for now so you can kind of see. We're gonna connect with the um, stomach 25 and the spleen 15. And the nice way to do it is having your fingers kind of spread like this. So my navel's about here and I'm gonna open them, fingers like this, and gently project energy in towards my belly. But being gentle, I don't wanna poke too hard and what we can do is just send some lovely breath to this area just gently activating giving some lovely chi key to this part to activate it and um, give us a bit more of a nice upward energy from the spleen and the stomach downwards Great. And then from here, we're going to go down to stomach 36. So stomach and spleen on the front of the body all the way down, like Cliff said, kneecaps, and then one hand below and just on the outside of the shin. So you can press these. I like to press this with my thumb in here. That's a really nice one. And this one, I feel you can be uh, quite uh, vigorous as long as it's not too sore super and I'm gonna bring my knees forward and curl up I'm gonna sit on the floor now and we're gonna come to spleen six like Cliff said if you're pregnant or you might think you are pregnant please skip this one out so we're going to go down the inside of the shin and from the ankle slightly up it's kind of one hand again and there's like a nice dip there and it's where kidney liver and spleen meet oh it feels very calming and um i guess kind of energizing at the same time You know, when you've had a very delicious dinner and it feels satisfying, that's what it feels like. So let's do the other side. So same thing, down the inside of the shin, 
just up from the ankle by your hand and giving a nice press. So it kind of that kind of delicious, satisfied feeling. I definitely need to work this point. If I was a sad little deflated balloon, I need to give myself a little bit more energy and my heaviness linking to damp in the body. So this point is very good for me. And now we're gonna to go to a point that Cliff needs. So if the energy rushed up and you felt quite hot in the head, we're gonna to go to the metatarsal in between the second and third toe into the webbed part. And we can press it with a thumb or a finger. I like to hold the foot underneath as well. Just pressing in there. You can also catch your foot this way. Um, sitting on a chair is also useful to catch this point. And we'll do that on both feet. Well, I hope this is working for everyone who felt a rush of energy up towards the head. So clearing the mind. So if you've been thinking way too much recently, lots of thoughts going on, this one's going to be really great get a bit more calm and allowing the stomach energy to come down to the ground and connect to earth. Super. Great, so we're gonna come back up to standing, taking your time, and I'm gonna run through a sequence for you. This time there is a left and a right, so I'll show you it on one side first, and then um, if you like, you can and go with me, but I'll go through it slowly to begin with, and then I'll add the breath in and we'll do uh, left and right, and then we can do it in your own time with your own breath. Obviously with Scaravelli's approach, so moving on the breath, moving with our spirals, allowing ourselves to give in to gravity, and this wonderful space in the lower back that we connected to, where kid, uh, bladder 23 is, which kind of is the opposite to our um, spleen 15 and stomach 25, which is great. These two can work so well together. So let's do this wonderful sequence for the earth energy, um, Scaravelli style. And so I'll show you it first. So we're in parallel. I'll come back a bit so you get my arms in as well. Great, and I'm going to start with my hands on my belly area, round the two points on stomach and spleen. I'm just going to take a breath into the belly and breathe out. The next out breath, I'm going to soften the knees and the arms come sideways up. I'm just going to gently look up towards the sky, activating these points so I'm not collapsing in the back. It stems from here and grows outwards and then gather the hands to the sky and we're going to dive forward, softening the knees and the head and neck and then with the feet grounded and planted in to the earth, we're going to take an in-breath and ripple through the spine, not forgetting the face as well. And then from here, I'm going to step back, so I'll turn sideways. I'm going to do right leg, stepping back, then the left leg into a plank. If that's too much, come straight to your knees. And then dropping the knees and coming to all fours. And we're going to do like we did last week, but this time thinking of our knees and legs connecting uh, directly underneath the pelvis and the hands spreading in the ground. So we've got a strong, stable base. And we're gonna breathe out and breathing in. So we're really allowing that, those points on the stomach area to really activate and help us move our spine and breath. Great, and then on the third one, we're gonna tuck our toes, no, we're gonna come back, sorry, into a child's pose. Um, you can stay up on your forearms if that's um, quite uncomfortable on your knees, or place a bolster or blanket um, between your knees and calves. 
Coming back to where it was comfortable to rest the belly, rest the front of the body on the earth. And on the next in-breath, we're going to allow the tailbone to send us forward, tucking the toes under, and we're going to use our feet, the connection with that lovely stomach 44. It's sending the energy downwards, so we can just gently rise up to a downward dog. Taking a breath here. And then as we breathe in, we're going to allow the feet to lift up, so we're Pressing down all the way through to an upward facing dog. If this is a little too much, roll through to a, a smaller cobra. Okay, so really only going as far as is comfortable. We're not pushing anything, but really making sure the shoulders are sliding down the ribs at the back and opening the pelvis at the front. Lovely, and then coming back to all fours again. And from here, we're going to take a variation of cat cow. As we breathe out, I'm going to bring my right knee towards my head. And as I breathe in, I'm extending my right leg backwards, making sure I don't turn out or dropping in the hip because this leg's nice and strong and allowing the earth energy to come up. It's helping my pelvis to stabilise and activating these points on the front as well. Obviously, you can keep the leg on the floor um, if this is a little too high or sore on the knee or the pelvis. So we're going to breathe out and breathe in and breathing out constantly, moving with the breath. Lovely. On the third one, we're going to step through into a little lunge and I'm going to shift my left foot, toes slightly turned out and with this wonderful energy from the earth, the spleen channel is going to help us lift all the way up and we're in a wonderful warrior one. Lovely. So we want this knee, the inner leg to stay nice and active and this one spiralling nicely outwards, connecting with these points on the front and allowing the arms to just gently float up and they can be quite soft maybe here and if it's okay we can do exactly the same we did at the beginning opening up to the sky that gorgeous sun that we have in Norwich today hopefully it's sunny where you are and then we're going to come forward bringing the feet back together again softening the knees gathering this earth energy up and drawing it down and placing our hands back on the belly area. I hope that all makes sense for you. We'll do um, left and then right, and then we'll see if we've got a little bit of time to go through it again together um, with your own breath and rhythm. Again, not forcing anything. We really don't need to make a pretty pose and you can adapt things. So we don't have to go full to full upward facing dog. We can come to cobra or even allowing the face just to lift slightly off the floor. Okay, so I'll talk through the left side a little bit quicker, but not too fast. And um, we can begin, but yes, you're all sensible and intelligent human beings. I'm sure you can make a good use of breath and movement and anytime you feel dizzy please take a rest and maybe lie down as well so hands on the belly area breathing in to that lower part of the belly and breathing out breathing in and as we breathe out we're going to soften the knees and allow the arms to gather up wide arms looking up to that gorgeous sunshine. Lovely, and then we're gonna dive forward. We can soften the knees here. And then we're gonna breathe in through the feet, rippling through the spine. Now this time I'm gonna step left foot back and then right and come into plank or come straight to knees. And then we're gonna to come to our all fours to do the lovely cat 
and cow. So I breathe out as my head comes to the ground and breathing in as my tail and head move away. Lovely. And then drawing the sacrum back. I have widened my knees. I like to keep rearranging my legs and spine to feel comfortable or coming to a, a child's pose that works for you, knees together or coming here. Whatever works for you, taking a breath, allowing the front of the body to really rest in the earth, like nourishing us as we connect to the ground. And then on the next in breath, I'm going to allow the pelvis, that lovely pelvic bowl and the movement from the front stomach muscles to come up, tucking the toes under, we're going to float the hips to the sky towards the sun. And then on the next in breath, we're going to roll through to upward facing dog or a slight opening of the front of the body. Great, allowing the shoulders to go down the ribs, melting at the back and coming back again to all fours. This time we're going to extend the left leg out. So I'm going to breathe out, head and knee come together. Breathing in, reaching that second toe away from your face. Breathing out. Breathing in. And one more, breathing out. Breathing in, Fit, uh, hands are like feet spreading on the ground. And then stepping that left foot through and I'm gonna turn my right toes slightly out, not too far. And I'm going to press really nicely into the ground. The more you press down, the easier it is to come up. The strength in your legs, uh, you can use that floor earth connection. And you can stay here, allowing the shoulders to relax. Not forgetting to keep these lovely points at the front active. And we can gently open up towards the sky with the arms before coming forward again, catching ourselves and then arm curling, arms out wide and drawing it down to the belly again. So hopefully it's really helping you warm up, even if the exercise before where the heat rushed up towards the head because it's grounding sequence, it should create more heat and a more even blood flow, blood circulation throughout the whole body, which is also really good for digestion. So let's do it once more on each side and then we'll check in and um, maybe move on to the next thing together. So I'll do right and then left and I'll stay facing one way as well. So connecting the hands on the stomach area at the front. We want to allow everything to really drop down, down to the ground. The heels are connected and the toes are spreading. We're going to breathe into the belly area and breathe out. Breathing in and as we breathe out, softening the knees, allowing the hands to come out wide. Gently looking up if that's okay for you. Hands together and then scooping forward. Lovely. Even if your knees are soft, we don't need to go so far if that's sore in your lower back. Or using a chair as well. Breathing in and rippling through. And this time we're going to step back right leg. I'll just turn sideways so it's a bit easier. Into plank. Nice and strong in the core. And the feet and hands pushing against this gorgeous earth, giving us energy. Knees down to all fours. I'm going to breathe out, releasing everything down into the ground and breathing in to the cow pose. Breathing out, breathing in, 
Breathing only going as far as is comfortable. Breathing out and breathing in. And then coming back to a child's pose, whichever's comfiest for you. Allowing the front of the body to really rest in the ground. It's there for us. That's the joy of gravity. There's something that comes back to support us and nourish us in our earth. And then the next in breath, allow the tailbone to bring us forward. We're gonna tuck the toes under and pressing with the toes into the hand, allowing the sacrum to come up to the sky. And we can have our knees um, bent here and allowing the head and neck to be relaxed. No forcing, none at all. Great, and then on an in-breath from the toes, we're gonna curl through the spine to an upward facing dog or to a cobra, making sure that the shoulders and neck are nice and open or looking forward if that's okay for you. And then releasing it by drawing the sitting bones back. And we're going to come to all fours and um, feel free to pad in the ground and sway the hips from side to side. I do like to keep moving in between sequences. There's a thousand movements between each asana. So this time we're going to use the left leg. I'm going to breathe out and the head and knee drawing together. And I'm going to send that lovely second toe, that stomach 44, lengthening that away from the head. Lovely, breathing out and breathing in. It's as though that lovely breath is drawing down to the toe and cooling our head down. One more, breathing out and breathing in, reaching away and keeping that supporting leg nice and strong and stable. And then stepping that foot through Oh, I've done the left side first, I see what I've done. Turning the right foot out and then we're going to press that gorgeous energy down using gravity to lift us slightly up to the sky to warrior one. This is warrior one variation and we can open up to the sun like a flower, taking in all of that photosynthesis. Lovely. And then diving forward. Lovely. And then we're going to soften the knees and uncurl up to standing. So taking your time to uncurl, you might feel a little dizzy and circles with the hands on the belly. So same thing on the right side. I went left side straight away and not forgetting you can play with the stance in Warrior One. Doesn't have to be so wide. Can make it a bit narrower this way or a bit wider. See what's good for you. Okay, the right side, <laughs> we'll begin again. So feet planting in the ground, really allowing things to just go where they feel comfortable. Breathing in and breathing out, drawing that energy to the belly. Breathing in and out. We're gonna soften the knees, opening the arms up towards the sky moving from the stomach and the spleen channel on the belly and then we're going to dive forward softening the knees if need be breathing in rippling through the spine this time stepping back right and then left and coming to knees if you'd like to skip the plank out strong plank nice and stable and then knees to the ground and we'll do cat cow Allowing the head and pelvis to draw together and move away. Breathing in and breathing out. Strong legs and palms are planted nicely in the ground. Lovely. One more. Breathing out and breathing in. And then rearranging to come back to a comfortable child's pose. We're even coming to about here. Wow, this feels very nice. I've allowed my knees nice and wide and my elbows to drop down and it's opening and giving space to the front of my hips 
which is also where the stomach and spleen meridian run. They also come to the front of the face. So anytime we're moving the head and neck, we're gently opening and kind of tonifying the stomach and spleen on the front of the body. And then we're gonna breathe in and allow the pelvis to shift us forward, tucking the toes under and slowly floating the pelvis to the sky. We can soften the knees here. So we've got very nicely planted, strong feet and hands. And then breathing in, rippling the spine through to downward dog if that's comfortable or coming through coming through to a, a cobra to open up the front of the body keeping the feet active so they're not floppy legs great not like my deflated balloon <laughs> we want nice active feet lovely and then drawing back again to all fours this time we're going to use the right knee and it's going to draw in towards the head as we breathe out. And as we breathe in that second toast, drawing that lovely cooling air that we inhale all the way down to the feet. Breathing out, breathing in, sending the energy from the head down to the feet. Breathing out and in. And then stepping through with that right foot and I'm going to place my left foot slightly turned out and I'm going to press with that gorgeous earth energy to allow me to come straight up to warrior one. You can wiggle around and rearrange allowing that leg to have this spiraling sensation and everything's nice and active here on the front opening up towards the sun diving forward again into parallel and gently taking your time to uncurl. Oh, looking at that sun again and drawing it down into the belly. Great. I hope you're all doing okay. I'm very warm now, which is uh, wonderful. I just check the time. How are we doing? Great. I don't know what you think. If we just do once more on one side, I think choose your favorite side. I won't talk so much, I will just do it with you. I'm going to do the left side because this one seems to um, get a bit stuck sometimes. And then we'll move on to lion's breath, which is an amazing thing. It does so many good things. So I'm going to do the left side and I'm not going to talk. I know, amazing. I'm going to give my stomach channels on my face a rest. hope you're all doing all right and having fun with that sequence so it's 
always good to go with your own rhythm. And the same with when you want to do, share this as a recommendation for any of the symptoms um, Cliff has nicely shown us at the beginning. So it could be done a lot slower, or if there's some kind of dampness in the body that needs kind of ridding out, warming up, you can do it a little faster, completely connecting with the breath, and hopefully it will help uh, most of those syndromes. So now, I'd actually, oh, yes. I just thought of something. As I was doing that, it was great, by the way. I feel a lot better already. I'm much better. Oh, great. Um, but I noticed that one thing that occurred to me is when we do the warrior pose, this one, yes. I can yes. really feel it energising spleen three. Yes, on the, the foot. Yeah, that's okay. another one of my most favourite points, just right in the foot here. Yeah, because yeah, that's it. That's it. We want to give give in to gravity but not give in to gravity as in folding yeah. folding in on the feet and the knees you know this is the deflated balloon <laughs> yeah it's kind of like that strong warrior you know yeah. like strong feet the knees are like nourished and strong like a, a tree really growing out the ground yeah, brilliant yeah i like that clear well next so if we come to sitting, and you can do this on a chair, so I'll just get a chair if you wish, or we can sit on the floor, and um, it's called lion's breath. I'm sure most of you have heard of it. So if you are on a chair, make sure you're kind of forward so we can really sit on the sitting bones and plant the feet in the ground. And we can gently lean forward, allowing the shoulders to melt down the ribs at the back and the hands can really be placed a little bit of weight on the thighs which is also pressing gently on our stomach and spleen meridian on the top of the knee so we can do this or we can sit nicely on the floor i'm going to opt for a knees kind of like this but you can also sit cross-legged or with a bolster underneath as well so get comfortable and we're going to connect with lion's breath i'll just get my notes because the, there's an important <gasps> important word for it and i like the link with it in sanskrit it's called where have i put it <laughs> it is called simhasana Simhasana, it reminds me of Simba of the Lion King, which um, helped me remember it's the lion's pose. And we're connecting to the breath. And it's got an amazing array of things that it, it benefits. It alleviates stress and anxiety, any frustration in the body or mind. It improves digestion hugely. It opens and releases all of the muscles in the face and neck. It relieves tension and tightness, particularly in the jaw, but also round the mid and lower back. It improves blood circulation. It's an energizing and awakening breath for your body. It helps ease the mind. What else? It opens throat chakra. So it helps boost your confidence. So, you know, you can speak clearly because it unblocks anything. So if there's, like Cliff said, energy coming upwards and things get blocked, this lion's breath will help clear any blockages in the throat and the head. And uh, I think it also helps um, sleep as well. I'm sure the list goes on, but let's <laughs> try this out. So to begin with, we're gonna do three breaths, keeping the tongue inside the mouth, Yes, that's it. We don't need to worry about what we look like for this pose. We just have to go for it. Kind of like the Maori dance they do in, um, in New Zealand. Um, I'm sure they're probably very healthy doing that. Um, so we want to place our hands on our knees and allow the shoulders to be nice and wide so we can take in air. And we're going to breathe in through the nose deep down into the belly and as we breathe out so i'll show you from the side as we we breathe out we're going to gently allow the pelvis to tip a little forward but 
not um, breaking in the spine. So we're allowing the pelvis to tip forward a little more so the breath can come out of our mouths, kind of like a, a window and you <sighs> allowing heat to come on, you're making like a little steamed patch on the front and the sound is ha or like a, a lion ha like this. So we'll do three like that and as we breathe in we want that lovely connection to the sky to grow. So we're going to breathe in through the sky, the head floats all the way up to the sky and as we breathe out the pelvis is gently going to tilt forward and we'll breathe out through the mouth. Breathing in, floating that spine up, breathing out. Really allowing the mouth to open, but we don't want to create any more tension on the neck. We really want this to open. Breathing in, floating the head up, breathing out. Lovely. So I hope, <laughs> hope you're doing all right with that. So the next stage that we'll do is so breathing in through the nose, down to the belly. And as we breathe out, we can gently tilt forward, placing more weight in the hands, but making sure we stay nice and wide in the front of the neck and shoulders. And this time we want to reach the tip of the tongue down to the earth. So the tongue goes down. And if you wish, you can put your eyes looking up to the sky or some people look towards the third eye. So you might go a little cross-eyed. This is where inhibition goes out the window. So if you'd like to activate the tongue, it really, really improves digestion hugely and releases all stress and anxiety. So let's do three together. If it's uncomfortable, Please just stick to the with the tongue inside the mouth. So we're going to breathe in, head floating up to the sky, into the belly. As we breathe out, you can make a bit more of a noise than me if you like, like ha. Breathing in, breathing out, breathing in. And breathing out one more time. Lovely. And returning to a natural breath. Hopefully you're not feeling too dizzy. Um, my, my jaw feels much better. I feel like I've got more energy going down towards the ground, especially with the stable pelvis in the sitting position. So you can do this breath seven times and you can rest in between each breath as well. You don't have to go one after the other, but I thought three felt quite nice to try it out. First with a ha and then a stronger feeling with the tongue sticking out. So what we can do now is just gently come back to a comfortable sitting position, perhaps place one hand on the belly. Um, let's just check in, see how we're doing. Hopefully the energy hasn't gone rushing up to the head or like me, you went like a heavy deflated balloon. Hopefully feeling quite nourished and wholesome in your body and mind. And also if thoughts float in as you've been doing the sequence or the breath, that's fine as well, allowing them to float in like clouds and float out again. Great. So let's move from sitting. Lovely. I'm just going to check the time, see how we're doing. Oh, yes. So I would like to share with you um, the Makaho, which there are six different moves. And this time it's going to be the Makaho for the stomach and spleen. And there are 
similar moves in yoga, I have this lovely yoga anatomy book. Hopefully I've um, pegged it on the right page. Um, but I wanted to show you that there's so many similarities between shiatsu and yoga. Where is it? Here we are. So we can sit for stomach and spleen in these positions like this. If you have any knee or ankle issues, don't worry at all. We can do this sitting on blocks, cushions, bolsters. So I will show you with different variations and we'll do it Scaravelli style. So again, coming in to a kneeling position, it's also opening up the stomach and spleen on the lower legs and connecting to that. Personally, I like to widen the legs and sit my bum in between my heels. And what we're going to do to begin is lifting the pelvis up. So we are tucking the pelvis under and I'm gonna walk the hands back a little, allowing my face to stay forward so I'm not going to let the head come back. I'm just gonna take a few breaths here. Great, and then come back up to sitting, walking, and then untucking the pelvis. So if you have the knees together, same thing, lifting up and tucking the pelvis, okay? And then you can gently walk back using your hands and only go as far as is comfortable. We don't want to damage anything on the front of the leg or in the pelvis or even crunching in the lower back. Oh, horrible, none of that. So super soft and easy and making sure we've got those lovely points, even the ones on the feet, you know, being nicely activated. Great, and then walking back out of that. So I'll show a modification. So you can use a bolster or lots of cushions. So if the knees are sore, you can sit on a bolster like this, ankles, if that's uncomfortable on the ankles, roll a towel and put a sausage towel underneath the ankles so it lifts them to help um, uh, this action happening if that's uncomfortable. And the same thing, always tucking the pelvis so we protect our lower back. And again, even if the fingertips just gently come back to the ground and we don't have to go very far at all and taking a breath in and out. Taking your time, lovely. And walking the hands back and untucking the pelvis. If uh, you feel comfortable sitting on the ground, you can come back, lifting the pelvis. You can come back to your elbows. Um, well, I haven't tried it in a while, but you can lie all the way back with the arms and the back on the floor behind you with the head resting on the ground. I'm not going to try that today. So we want to, same thing, keep everything strong at the front and open. And always walking our hands back to sitting and uncurling the pelvis and for uh, opposite uh, movement, we can gently fold forward, allowing the front of the body to be relaxed. If that's also funny on your knees, if you come out of the pose and then come to child's pose to relax all the front of the body. And again, taking your time to come up to sitting. But um, hopefully you can find a way that works best for you. But I always find it very important. So it's kind of engaging the um, stomach 25 and spleen 15 to help protect the lower back. And it opens up more the meridians in the front of the leg, as well as the floor opening the ones on the lower leg. And obviously we're opening the front of the chest and all the way into the face. So hopefully all of that um, felt okay for you and um, not too strenuous. 
Scarrow Valley approach, only going, it's kind of undoing the doing. It's absolutely great, Kat. I really enjoyed it. And you know what? That um, I feel so much better, by the way. <laughs> Oh, but I've, I've completely yeah. forgotten about the lion's pose. I haven't been doing that at all lately. But actually, do you know what I, what I realized is when you, don't, if you don't mind me doing it, you go like this. No. And you look up, it opens up stomach one and two and three. Exactly. I can feel I it opening up all the way here. And that's really good because that kind of completed the whole channel. Yes, the whole track. We did the whole thing without us even knowing. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. great. Okay, let's quickly finish yeah. up because we've only got 30 seconds left before the end of the thing. We haven't really got any time oh, for any yes. questions. I don't think they just quick back at the chat. Oh my goodness, there's nine yes, questions. I think loads. <laughs> well, we, we could do them quite quickly. I feel energized now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, look, I, just, I can read them out. They're not really so much questions, they're more just comments, really. Um, oh, lovely. Jane said she was floating. I'll just quickly flip them up. Oh, here's Dinah. Other, you remember? Oh yes, the other. Oh, I see. This is the other. I see, Diana. Thank you very yes. much. Yeah. Okay, but there was, yes. and there was one. Oh, and so that's just all people's other responses. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. The energy exercise, and then there was more recently. Um, can't remember who now was interested in alternatives for people who couldn't manage all the asanas, um, like yes. working on a chair. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Yoff says. Yoff. It was Yoff. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Excellent. Yes. Okay, yeah. Yes, definitely. There's so many modifications, but I think um, because time's quite squeezy, um, but you uh, you can look online or you can email through New Energy Work and I can see if I can get some pictures to help with modifications. Yeah, well. that's uh, a good thing. Just let's just see how many people, just before we go, have you visited the online course yet? Let's see, yes or no? Have you visited the Meridian online course? Uh, because Kat's been working away, she's been putting all the resources up and there is a forum on a community forum. So if you've got any questions, you can always ask Kat as we go through the through the course. Look, plenty that's plenty it. more people. Um, re um, yeah, we'll send some links out to you so you can join in and catch up with everything. Okay, a massive thank you to all our members and donors. You've made this possible, you know who you are. We've been running on donations and memberships purely through the pandemic. And we've been giving everything out free to the worldwide Shatsu community and you've made that possible, that's fantastic. Just to remind you that Kat's making, building the online course as we go and everything's free to access since the start of COVID. So that's it. And there'll be bricks fed, so please bear with, by the end of the week, this one will be ready for yeah, you. Yeah, hopefully by Saturday we'll have everything ready online and we'll email it out to you as well. Okay, so I'm just going to go on the chat. I'm going to put a big heart on the chat for Kat because I've really, really enjoyed it. I feel so much better, Kat. It's really, really good. Oh, great. Yes. <laughs> and thank you. <laughs> Clear. Yeah, thank you to everyone who, who came for the live. And, and if you're watching the recording, hope you enjoyed it. Join the online course and we'll see you next week for the metal element. I think it is, yeah? Yes, right, it is. Excellent yeah. metal. All right, bye. bye.